12 and 9. And Babukia and Uni, please don't name your children that, because I'll have a very difficult time with that name, if you don't mind. And Babukia and Uni, their brethren were over against them in the watches. So we know even in Nehemiah's time, time was divided by watches. Tehillim 63.6. Tehillim 63.6. Melech David says, the psalmist said, When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. Circle those words. The night watches. Plural. The night watches. Ika 2.19. Ika 2.19. Lamentations 2.19. Arise and cry out in the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the face of Yahweh. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of the young children, the faint for hunger at the top of every street. Danny, notice that in the Tanakh it mentions three watches. The morning watch, the second or middle watch, and the night watches. We just read that. Again, the morning watch, the middle watch, and then the night watch. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Now go with me to Matijahu 14.25. Again, I don't know the purpose of this message, but just try to ride the boat with me, please. <laughs> Matijahu 14.25. 14.25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahshua went to them, just taking a stroll on Lake Kinneret on the Sea of Galilee, which Danny is very familiar with in Israel, our Jewish friend from Israel. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yeshua went to them walking on Lake Kinneret or the Sea of Galilee. Luke 2, 12, 38. So now we have the fourth watch. We have the morning watch. The middle watch, the night watch, and now we have the fourth watch. Luke 12, 38. It came, it shall be, Yeshua speaking of his return to this earth. How do I know Yeshua is returning? Because he came once, and the same Bible it says he's coming once, says he's coming again. So I don't have to pray about anything. It's the same Bible. Exactly. So I know for a fact. Amen. It shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch. And find them so, blessed are those servants. Meaning, Yeshua said, if I come back in the second watch or the third watch and I find my servants watching, hello, that's what watching is, they're blessed. Meaning, you shouldn't be into your own thing, you should be into the things of Yahweh, Amen. so you will be awake and alert at his return. Yeah. Do you need to come here every Shabbat? Probably not. You can get by without coming. But you tend to slack off. You tend to get sluggard. You tend to lose interest. It keeps you focused being part of the Kehillah of Yeshua. It keeps you focused. And it keeps you alert. And what does Hebrews say in 9.25? Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. And you should get together all the more, even more and more, as you see the day approaching. Not less and less, but more and more. And the closer we get to his return, the more we should be getting together. Not We shouldn't draw back from fellowship and yeah. fellowship less. We should be fellowshipping more. Amen. Now, uh, 14.25. We see that there are four watches of the night. In order to understand what we are presenting here, we have to get a, cl a, a clear understanding. Are there three watches, according to the Tanakh? So if there are only three watches in the night, why do we now have a fourth watch of the night? When is Yeshua coming? Clearly at night. And I'm going to prove it to you later. Because there are many scriptures, including in Zechariah, when he says he will light up the evening sky, and in that time there will be no darkness, no light. It will be a day unlike any other day. His parousia, his coming, will lighten up a completely dark universe. So he's, not, he's coming at night. And we need to know the watches of the night to understand some things about his coming. Now, Matthew 14.25. So we need to understand that somebody added a fourth watch to the three existing watches recorded for us in our Tanakh. Question is, who added the fourth watch? What was the fourth watch called? We must answer these two questions to provide the answers of the rooster crowing. 
who ended the fourth watch, what, what was the fourth watch called, and we will have our answer if it was a rooster who um, crowed on that night that Mashiach was betrayed. First, let's look at the subject. I got Vincent fired, huh? Let's look at the subject of watches. Watches. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. Vincent, I told you, stop speaking Swahili in my services. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. Hallelujah. The periods, the periods into which the time between sunset and sunrise was divided. What is a watch? From sunset to sunrise, the periods of time division. What is a watch? The period of time division practiced by the Jewish people from sunset to sunrise. These are called watches that are overseen by watchmen. What a word. When he was speaking today, he was speaking in the Ruach. They are overseen by watchmen who relieve each other at the end of their period or watches. There are frequent references in the scriptures to the duties of watchmen who are appointed to give notice of the approach of the enemy. Turn with me please as an example, just as an example, to 2 Shmuel 2.18. 2 Shmuel 2.18.24. 2 Shmuel 2.18. I'm sorry, 2 Shmuel 18.24. 18.24. 24. Okay. 18.24. For those of you who are called to teach, it's always good to repeat the scripture more than once because most people do not catch it the first time. Second Shmuel 18.24. Davi sat between the two gates and the watchman, there it is, went up to the roof over his gate to the wall. Lifted up his eyes, look, saw a man running alone. The watchman cried and told the Melech. The Melech said, if he's alone, there is news in his mouth. 26, and the watchman saw another man coming, running, and the watchman called the gatekeeper and another man, see another man is running, and the Melech said, oh, he's also bringing news. So we have watchmen watching for news and the onslaught of the enemy. We also see that in 2 Melachim 9, 17 through 20. You could look it up on your own time. 2 Melachim 9, 17 through 20. Yeshayahu 21, verses 5 through 9. In the Brit Chadashah, ministers are, or teachers are also spoken of as watchmen. Let's turn there just for the interest. We, we read that today in the Torah part, in the Brit Chadashah Parsha. Very good. We read that today in the Brit Chadashah. But let's take a look at it. Yermiahu 6, Jeremiah 6. Can I hear a good amen? 17. 617. Also, I have set watchmen over you. That was that's why I was I want to kiss you for that word, Daryl. Alright, we'll do it when when we're when we're alone. I'm gonna give you a holy kiss. When nobody's watching you. Nobody's watching except Rifka. Also, I set watchmen over you saying, listen to the sound of the Shofar. A watchman doesn't watch without an instrument to make people aware of what's going on. The watchmen are to listen to Yahweh and the approach of the enemy and then warn the people by sounding the shofar. But the people said, we will not listen. Just like many people in difficult marriages. The shofar was sounded today. The watchman has spoken. And a lot of people are just going to keep playing the blame game and keep blaming other people for their problems. Right, exactly. <laughs> Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Yechezkel 33.2. Yechezkel 33.2. Ben Adam, speak to the children of your people and say to them, when I bring the sword or... or, or divine judgment upon a land, if the people of the land take a man from their borders and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blows the shofar and warns the people. And whoever hears the sound of the shofar and does not take warning, when the sword comes to take him away, pray to be left behind, all you Christians. Stop praying for your silly old rapture. 
When the sword comes to take you him away, his blood will be on his own hand because...